I want to stand and read some scriptures tonight. We uh, did last week John 20, 21 through 28. We want to pick up with Brother Thomas. This is a, another part of the resurrection of Jesus from the Gospel of John. John chapter 20, and we'll go also into 21. You just follow me, if you would. John 20, 29. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Now Jesus, in John 21, appears... This will be the third time he appears after rising from the dead. He's at the seashore. Uh, and uh, Simon Peter talks about going fishing with his disciple brothers. Now let's pick up at verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, and a hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, Thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. May God bless his word and you may be seated. Thank you. I want you to notice the screen for a moment. The Wonderful Words of Life, part one, was last Sunday night. We spoke in John 20 and 22 the wonderful word of power given by the resurrected Lord Jesus, receive the Holy Spirit. That was verse 22, John 20, 22. Secondly, we spoke about another wonderful word was forgiveness. John 20, 23 spoke of the word remit. The sins would be remitted. That was pardon or forgiven. Thirdly, we spoke about the wonderful words of faith given to Thomas They will reach and believe. John 20 and 23. Now we begin tonight the wonderful words of life part two. We want to say our fourth wonderful word tonight is a word of blessing. The word of blessing. John 20 and 29. As Jesus spoke to Thomas, he said unto Thomas, what did he tell him? 
Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. See, Thomas saw and believed. But he said to him, Blessed are they who have not seen and yet believed. Now, blessed means literally to speak well of someone. It can be called to praise someone as we say we praise God, we bless God, extol God, exalt God. Blessed means to cause to prosper, especially spiritually prosper, where one is satisfied even regardless of the outward condition. We are blessed people. Uh, even Christians tonight dying around the world say they are blessed ones because they're blessed for suffering and righteousness sake. And we can say blessed means to show forth favor. And he spoke these words to Thomas. Blessed are you, Thomas, because you've seen and believe, but blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. Many things in life you cannot see with the regular eye. We call it the naked eye, your plain eye. It takes eyes of faith, doesn't it? Did you hear about the teacher who was seeking to confuse some of her young students one day? The teacher said to the young boy, do you believe in God? He said, oh, yes, ma'am, I believe in God. She said, do you see God? He said, no, ma'am. Well, she said, then, then there's not God. There is no God. He thought for a moment, he said, Dear teacher, do you have a brain? She said, well, sure, I got a brain. He said, have you ever seen your brain? She said, no. He said, well, then you don't have a brain. It takes faith, faith to be blessed of God. Hebrews 11, if you haven't read Hebrews 11 lately, you ought to try that sometime. Hebrews 11, 1, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith it is impossible, impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Ephesians 2, 8 and following, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a what? Gift of God. Lest any man should boast. Aren't you glad God has blessed you with the gift of faith? We take him at his word. We come to know him. That is without doubt. It is Believing. Jesus is the heaven sent Son of God, born of Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit. He lived a sinless life, died a cruel death on the cross, was buried in the borrowed tomb, and arose the third day as a resurrected living Lord. So, what Jesus is saying to Brother Thomas. He says to us, blessed are those who believe. Happy, really favored of God are those who trust him and believe. Do you tr uh, trust him tonight? A fifth wonderful word tonight that Jesus, the resurrected Jesus gives, is a word of life. Life. You see that's in John 20, 30, and 31. John the Apostle is the disciple whom Jesus loved. As a true believer, he often spoke about life. And he finished telling, Jesus finished telling Thomas, because you saw and believed. But what about when we believe in the Lord Jesus, risen, that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God? We have life in his name. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Jesus is the life and he gives life. These things are written. What kind of things were written? The scriptures. Just look in John. John 1, 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. John 3, 15 and 16. You believe you have everlasting life or eternal life. 
John 3, 36, he who believes in the Son has life. Who who does not believe in the Son does not have life, and the wrath of God abides on him. John 4, 13 and 14, the woman at the well. It will be like a well of water welling up, springing up. To what? Life. Life. John 5 and 24, you don't come into condemnation. Those who believe, they have life. John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. There are some teachers and leaders today who said, I am the center of death. I'm the giver of death. And not Jesus. John 11, 25, 26, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John 17 and 3, this is life eternal. Thou mayst know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Do you have life? Because we know Jesus and the resurrected Jesus, he said, I write these things John did, the apostle, so that you can have life and know life. The great English scientist named Michael Faraday, he was dying on his deathbed, and a journalist came to him one day. He said, I want to ask you about the speculation about life after death. He must have heard him speaking about life after death. And Michael Faraday said, speculations, I know nothing of speculations. I only know certainty. I know that my Redeemer liveth. And because Jesus lives, I shall live also. You see, he knew Jesus. Believing. He was blessed of God. He had life, eternal life, through Jesus. Many search for life in all the wrong places, wrong things. A missionary in the Philippines said he passed the a group of people praying one day, they were bowing to the statue of Mary. Others were worshiping as animism, that's believing in spirits living in everything. There's a missionary in Thailand who said there was Buddha statues on every corner of the streets. And Buddha believed that someone has to die and there are three phrases to repeat your life after death. But it's all death, no life, no hope, no eternity, no future, no heaven. Before we clap for ourselves as Americans, and many of us know Jesus and search for true life in him, what about those in our church family, on the church rolls of all churches, in this great America, who are trapped by possessions, by pleasures, people worship good luck charms, idols, statues in their homes. You might be surprised what people worship today in this great land called America. And we know with many other peoples from other countries bringing in all kinds of idols and gods. There are false gods everywhere. But true life is found in the God who loved us and gave us life through his son Jesus. The one who went to the cross, died to forgive our sins, and arose to give us power over death, hell, and the grave. He is the life giver, the life changer, the life saver, the life keeper. So the wonderful word of life, number five. Number six. We have the wonderful word of life is to remember. Remember. Now, Jesus, as we said, has seen his disciples fishing at the sea, and he's at the, on the seashore. In verses 1 through 8, the apostle John knows that it's Jesus. He says it's the Lord in verse 7. And then he speaks about the fires of coal we read here. 
in verse 9 and the fish and the bread. That goes back to John 18 and to Luke 5 and John 6 where Jesus fed the 5,000. He's making them to see the pictures again to prove that he is the true one who has been resurrected. He's just not a phantom. He's not a ghost out there just appearing and going away. Jesus says, you need to remember me. Look at verse 9. He wanted them to remember him through the fire there and the fish and the bread. He'd been with them for over three years, cared for them, walked with them, talked with them, taught them, preached the gospel. He healed and he forgave. He wanted them to know that he cared for them and was going to provide for them. What is it like to remember? Do you have a good memory? I was somewhere the other day and somebody looked at me and said, well, what happened to your mustache? I said, it's been gone a long time. I said, where have you been? We just haven't paid attention, I guess. But they don't remember. They just remember when I got it. I would tell you another story about that mustache, but I won't do that. I, I remember, you know, you remember strange things in life sometimes. I remember the lady in 1986, I'd gone to this church. I must have been there about six months or so, and I did love to sing. Like, you know, I love to sing at different times. I don't love to sing all the time. It's not what God called me to do, but um, she came out one day, and she said, when are you going to sing again? I said, well, I don't know. I talked to the choir director. I'll sing sometime. And um, she said, I want you to sing soon. I said, well, I don't know about that. I said, we'll talk about it. And uh, so she said, that's the only reason I voted for you, for coming to the church. And we got it on a few times, but we, she, was, she was a fine person. She's, she just had her ways, you know. Everybody has their own ways. I have my ways, and you have yours, I guess. We remember strange things in life, strange things. But Jesus wanted the brothers to remember who he was. That's why he had the fire of coal, you see and the, the bread and the fish, like he'd used it before. What about the blind man? He gave him new eyes. The paralyzed, he gave him new legs. The religious leaders, he rebuked them, called them whitewashed tombs. Pretty on the outside, but stunk on the inside. He remembered as he climbed up Calvary's mountain on the old rugged cross. It was an emblem of suffering and shame. He died for your sins and my sins. Buried in that borrowed tomb and then arose on the third day. So he tells the boys, the disciples, verse 10, what do you say? Bring me some fish over here. Bring me what you caught. And Peter, in verse 11, said they brought, they were dragging the nets. And they brought a great amount because they obeyed Jesus, what Jesus earlier had told them in chapter 21 about going out to fish. He took something small and he multiplied it into something great. And it's for us today, too, if we obey him. To take a little life and make it a big life in his sight. If we obey the master, he takes our sincere love and he adds kindness. I always remember this little card. I don't know if you've ever uh, had this card. I don't think I have any more cards. I might have them in one in my drawer left. If you meet me and forget me, you've lost nothing. But if you meet Jesus Christ and forget him, you've lost everything. You all heard of that card before? Maybe I get some more printed up sometimes. It might have been way back, years ago when it first came. A beautiful card. So remember Jesus, okay? The glorious resurrection. He was at the seashore. The wonderful word called remember. Now, number seven. The Lord Jesus gave the wonderful word of fellowship. Now, what... Where do we get this from? Look at verse 12. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. See, he's got the fish and the bread on the fire there. He's got a little meal for them ready. Have you ever been to a large restaurant? 
I'm in a large restaurant. You know you got tables over there that can seat six. This over here could seat eight. One in, maybe in the middle could seat ten. One over here in the corners, they seat two and such as that. You know what I'm talking about. I'm in a big place, big place. Now let me ask you, if you're sitting over there in that corner and you see a friend over there in a big table in that corner, are you going to holler from your place way over there and start talking to them and fellowship with them? How are you going to fellowship with them? You have to go dine with them. You have to go sit down beside them or sit in the same area. You see what I'm saying? You have to be with them. That's what Jesus is saying. Fellowship with me. Come and dine with me. I've got something fixed for you, a special meal. Come with me. You're my close friends. Sit down at the table with me as such. Share together. And Jesus cares for the physical needs of his brothers. But he moved deeply in a, a spiritual sense. The food, the fish is picturing his life. He's, he's the bread of life. His clothing, be clothed in the righteousness of Christ. On the road to Emmaus, uh, they said, come on and eat with me, Jesus. Well, they didn't know that was Jesus, but they knew when he did the Lord's Supper with them. They took the bread and he broke it, remember. On the road to Maitis, Luke chapter 24, Cleopas and the other disciple. So he sat at the table, they took the bread, and he blessed it and broke it. Their eyes were open. Jesus wants us, his church, his body, to come and dine with him. Revelation 3.20, that was the church at Laodicea. What did he say at the church at Laodicea? Did he walk up to the door and said, bye-bye everybody, I don't want to come in. I don't care about you anymore. I don't want to fellowship with you. What did he do? He stood at the door and he knocked. He said, I want to come in and what with you? Sup with you, dine with you, eat with you, share with you, fellowship with you. That's what he's talking about. The church, they, 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 were, they were lukewarm. They didn't know what was going on. They were indifferent. But he said, I want to have real fellowship. That's trusting in him. Knowing him personally, being taught by the Lord, going out to reach in his name, reach out in his name. Number eight tonight, the resurrected Lord Jesus emphasizes a wonderful word called love. Love. This is in chapter 21 and verse 15. Now he comes straight up with Peter. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. <clears throat> Do you love me more than these? Now, what is more than these? Was it his fishing life? Was it his job? The other disciples? The old times of the past fishing in the water was going to have to be laid down. More than boats that sailed and more than the nets they mended. More than the business he grew up with their father. Simon Peter, you've got to let it go. Your past work, your past fishing expeditions have got to cease. What about your experience today? What about your job, your work? Is Jesus Lord of your work? It, it amazes me how people can go to their work and they never mention Jesus. They don't show Jesus. They won't give a card about Jesus. They won't give an invitation card to come to, to the church. They won't give a little booklet, a little track. Is there something against doing that? If a employer said to you, you must not share anything, I said, when I walk out that door and I want to speak to Chad, I will speak to him. It is not your business who I speak to outside of this place. Is that not true? And do I not have a right outside, not inside, I'm saying. Just forget about being inside the workplace. 
I said, outside the workplace. I could take Chad to Ruby Tuesday or Old Chocolates or wherever I want to take him. If he wants to go with me. We're not on the work schedule. But he's still part of, he's part of my life, part of the workplace. You see what I'm saying? So you have, to, you have to have the ears and the eyes and the heart of Jesus. You've got to look beyond what other people say to you. If they put you down. You don't have to accept that. You go on. God will open up another door. So, is Jesus Lord of your work? Anyway, he's laying, uh, saying to uh, Brother Peter, Peter, do you love me more than fishing? Or more than these, the other disciples. Peter had a great love for his brothers. I mean, they walked together for those years, you know. In, in Mark 14, oh, Peter, you remember, he said, Even if all stumble, I will not stumble. Jesus said before the rooster crows, You will deny me how many times? Three times. Peter, I know your heart. Peter said, If I have to die, I won't deny you. Do you know what happened? He denied. We can do the same. How many years we walk with Jesus? We could do the same. So stirring question comes to, to you and me. Do you love Jesus more than these? What about your family? Ask some of our folks on, in the Disciples' Cross about Luke 14, 26 and following. What Jesus said about being his disciple. Do you love him more than your wife or spouse, more than your children, more than your relatives, more than your church friends? Do you love me more than programs at church, pleasures, your positions? Talking about this uh, wonderful word that Jesus emphasized to Peter about love is, is a powerful word. I, I never forget. Y'all know the hymn. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. This lady stood and was singing this song. And I wanted to go up to speak to her and say, could I see you after church a moment? The way you have acted, and you can stand there and smile and grin and sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. It wasn't anything very personal to me, but it was someone I knew. And I knew her life. And I said, There's something wrong with that. So if you see me singing, Oh, how I love Jesus. And you find out outside there that I'm doing some kind of foolish thing, you should confront me. You say, Now, preacher, preacher, you're singing, Oh, how I love Jesus, and I just found out something about you. Now, you need to be, let be sure it's true now. You see what I'm saying? You don't want to hurt somebody. You also want to say, Listen, they, there's something wrong with this going on. How can you sing, Oh, how I love Jesus? And over here, you're showing that you're hating a fellow brother or sister. You see, there's, there's two different things going on. We need to reconcile that. Jesus aims at the heart. See, he's not going to let us off. Jesus is not. He won't let me off, and I'll let you off. So examine your love for Jesus. Okay? And uh, I tell you, I'll pick up next time. I want to do some more things about examining our love for Jesus. All right? Well, let's just hold it right there and ask the Lord to, to bless tonight. And God is speaking to your heart how you're dealing with Jesus. Father God, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the wonderful words of the resurrected Jesus. As he came back, and especially here now with Simon Peter, it's, it's not only for Peter. He said it for us. Just like he had spoken to Thomas about believing, the same thing is for us. So tonight, Father, I pray you speak to every life. If we need Jesus, help someone to come to Jesus. Trust him as their very own Savior, Lord. Ask him to forgive their sins and come into their life. 
and live as Savior Lord. Then, Father, if someone needs to come into the church family, you speak to their hearts. Others for prayer, for rededication of their life, you let them deal with you. As your Holy Spirit begins to work, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.